I'm back. What's up, Tampa Bay? I hope everybody's staying safe, staying fit, and having fun in the summer sun. I'm Chuck Turgeon, the most hype, hype man you will meet on the street, here to get you in the know about tonight's show. On this episode, we are talking summer, sun, and the outdoors. First, Randy Meyer shares how COVID has made bike riding a popular way to spend the day. Then Michael gets out of the studio and into a boat when he visits Marine Max. Plus, we'll give you tips on protecting your skin when you spend the day outside in the sun. Finally, Aero Environmental tells us how to protect our pets from fleas and ticks. And now, for your host, the always melanated Michael Clayton! <laughs> Chuck, Chuck, I love you, man. Yes, I will forever and always be melanated, an illuminated source of energy integrated within my ebony brown pigment. And might I add? with a beautiful smile, baby. <laughs> well, I would have said with a beautiful wife. But thanks for the compliment, brother. School has started back across the country, but for most schools in Florida, parents still have a few more days to decide if they will be sending their kids to school or keeping them home for online learning. And many of people who know my wife as a primary care physician at the University of South Florida have reached out to gain our knowledge on the decision we too will have to make about sending our kids to school. So in this opening, I wanted to talk to you friend to friend, parent to parent, and share my family experience in hopes that it will help you make a decision that's best for your family. Now, we've all heard the saying, let's hope for the best and prepare for the worst. When our government says the virus is going to go away. It's going away, no, it'll go away. Like things go away, absolutely. In my opinion, that's our government hoping for the best. Authorities have also alluded to the fact that kids are only half as likely to get infected by the virus, like we should just rejoice and think that our kids are safe. Well, when all you have to really do is ask yourself, is a 50% chance safe enough to send your kid to school with hundreds of other kids? I don't think so. The government also has established social distancing while pictures have surfaced with hallways jam-packed with kids, many with no mask. This school, by the way, in Georgia, attempted to bring kids back to school only to be shut down for two days after nine kids tested positive. And let me add, that's only one school in the country. Here's the thing. We can't blame our government or schools for trying to give our kids a normal education. The only problem I see is that there is a new normal that is not obtainable for most. So from parent to parent, I give you this. It's okay to hope for the best. In many cases, if parents have to work, that's all we have is hope. But please don't forget to prepare for the worst. The CDC has also published a decision-making tool to help caregivers make the best decision for your family. I highly recommend parents familiarizing themselves with this tool to help make the best decision for you and your kids. Coming up, we have boats, bikes, and fabulous skin. See you on the other side. Honey, look at our neighbors. They're out in their backyard again, barbecuing with friends and their kids are playing outside. Well, they use Aero Environmental Services. I would love to go out in our yard more, but every time we do, we get eaten alive by mosquitoes and the kids get bit by fire ants. Maybe we should call Aero Environmental Services too. If you want to take back your yard from unwanted pests, contact the folks at Aero Environmental Services Pest Control. With same day service in most areas, you can start enjoying a pest free lifestyle tomorrow. COVID-19 has certainly changed the way we live our lives, whether it's working from home, cooking more of your meals, and trying to find outdoor activities to do while staying safe. You know, one of those activities that has seen a huge jump in participants is bike riding. And joining me today is Randy Meyer, the owner of Oliver Cycle Sports in New Tampa and board member of Bike Walk Tampa Bay. Randy, thank you so much for joining me today. 
Randy, I understand that uh, you are obviously have a passion and it's uh, kind of prompted you to get into uh, the bike cycle uh, business. You know, um, has it surprised you that there's been such a surge in cycling? I would be lying if, uh, yeah, I didn't say yes to that. Um, I think, you know, we hit the beginning of this and I knew something was, was going on when uh, we just were just, it was like Christmas in March, you know, and March is usually busy because the weather's good, but when it hit us, uh, we, said we weren't really ready. Yeah, so it was a big surprise. Well, uh, people are now, you know, they're, they're getting to this bike cycling thing, and obviously there's a lot of information that a lot of people may not know. So what are some of those things, those important things that new cyclists need to know before they actually buy a new bike? Well, you know, number one, I think to enjoy riding, you really need a bike that fits you properly yeah. and is appropriate for how you're going to use it. So when you go to a bike shop like ours, you know, we're going to ask you questions like where you're going to ride, who you're going to ride with, um, what your goals are. We want to make sure you have equipment that's actually going to be suited for that. So if you have big dreams, you want to you ride hundreds of miles a week, you want to do long rides, there are bikes that are made for that. There's equipment that you need for that. Right. So. Um, you know, making sure that you have the right bike and then it's the correct size and it's sized properly for you yes. is going to make sure that you have much more likelihood of success. And that's, and that's very important. I myself, you know, bought bikes, you know, from a, a local store. It wasn't really a specific bike store. Uh, and, it, you know, it was a big bike, but it didn't fit. After I wanted to really get into it, it didn't fit. Knees were hitting the handlebars and it just... It wasn't fun anymore, and I haven't touched the bike. So you definitely want to make sure that, uh, that everything is sized right now. Um, what is the mission of Bike Walk Coalition? Bike Walk Tampa Bay is basically just, it's a, it's a gathering of people that are passionate about um, bike safety and pedestrian safety in Tampa. So many of those people, most of those people um, you know, do it professionally. The Bike Walk uh, Coalition and, and the board, is a, it's a volunteer organization, so it's people that are just trying to do the right thing for Tampa um, and trying to, trying to get us off the path to the bottom that basically we've been on for the longest time um, and, and make us a respectable, safe city where yes. people can actually go out and ride and feel like they're not necessarily in danger. <laughs> And speaking of that, what, what, is, what is the one thing or multiple things that non-bike riders need to know? Because, you know, working in television, obviously, I've seen the PSAs where, you know, we're in dangerous times. Our bike riders are in real danger here in Tampa and Orlando, surrounding cities, because a lot of deaths are happening. As a, you know, as a bike rider, what do you want non-riders to know uh, specifically? Well, really, when you, when you start riding a bike, if you, if you haven't really been trained, the most important thing to realize is you are traffic, right? Be predictable. When you're out on the road, even when you're using a, a bike trail, think about you know, the intersections with cars and whether or not you're coming from a direction that, that cars would normally be coming from because drivers, you know, you get into patterns. You pull up to an intersection, you know, you look left, you look right, you look left, you go. If you're coming from the right, you know, riding against traffic right. because that's, that's really not safe, it's illegal, you should be you know, you're not going to be seen. You should be riding with traffic. You always need to think, you know, wow. where, am I, where would a car be? What would a car do in this situation? And you're going to be much safer that way. Wow. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that. They think they should actually ride against traffic. Well, you, you know, know, that's one of the things that we were taught growing up, not by any professional, you know, obviously, you know, you want to see what's coming so you can get out of the way. But obviously that's the wrong, wrong mindset to have. You brought some, uh, some, some gadgets here and some of the necessities laws have changed. Uh, and you can actually get pulled over and arrested if you don't have a light, I hear. Right. So having a light, do you mount a light on your helmet? Is it on your bike? What's the best place to mount a light? So for most people, having lights on the handlebars and under the seat, basically, that's going to be the best spot. Yeah. Um, if you are mountain biking, like, which is, a, you know, it's a bit more, it's a bit more, if, or basically I would say if, if the trails that you're riding on have a lot of turns, mm -hmm. there's a big benefit to having the light on your helmet because that way whenever you look, the light's gonna be right in front of you. Yeah. If it's on your handlebars, it's not necessarily gonna be where you're trying to see at any given time. Nothing wrong with having two. We even recommend lights during the day. Yeah. It's, not, it's not just a nighttime thing. I mean, night, you'll get a ticket, obviously you can't see, but 
you're safer with lights on all the time. All the time. And obviously a helmet is always, my, my kids don't think it's cool to wear helmets, but obviously a helmet can save your life. You wore a helmet? Yes, I wore a helmet <laughs> for a long time, and I will continue to wear a helmet uh, even in my bike ride. Randy, thank you so much for joining us today. When we come back, I get out of the studio and see all the options in boating at Marine Max. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and to see expanded interviews, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Michael Clayton Live. Benefits of dial implants are numerous. They give patients the confidence that they've been missing for years, and they are designed to last a lifetime. I did look at other places, but I tell you, the minute I walked into this place, I felt calm. Um, meeting Dr. July, she just immediately, I felt comfortable with her. She asked questions. For me to be excited about going to the dentist is an amazing feeling in itself. Boating is a popular pastime all across the country, but especially right here in Florida. And I enjoy going out on the boat with my family because we live on Lake Denonasasa. So I went out to one of the country's largest boat dealers to talk about the options that are available to get you out on the water. We're here at the Marine Max Clearwater and I'm speaking with General Manager Colin Hymanson and we are on the showroom floor where there are a plethora of boats of all different sizes and luxury packages and it is amazing. Colin, let's start with the boat that we're aboard today right now. Tell us a little bit about this uh, bit of uh, gorgeousness yeah, right so here. So this is a spectacular piece. It's a uh, Sea Ray 350 SLX R. So what the R stands for is racing. So these, ah. these outboards here are 450 horsepower racing motors uh, manufactured in, at Mercury Racing in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Uh, Blueprinted, high performance. Um, the R package has custom paint. Uh, you can see the beautiful stitching detail. Uh, just a spectacular boat, 35-foot Sea Ray. And something that I've never seen on a boat before, I'm a little bit outdated, but yes. I, uh, there's a grill on the boat. Yeah, it's an it's a electric Kenyan grill. <laughs> which is terrific. It's always fun to grill hot dogs and burgers yes. out on the water yes. and uh, you know, a nice day with the family. Boats have come a long way. No now, doubt about you it. You can rent a boat. You can uh, borrow a boat if you have yep. a good friend, but tell me about the great things about owning your own boat. Uh, boat ownership is pretty special, right? Because uh, it, 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 it's your own personal place to get away, right, with the family. And uh, if, if you own the boat, you can use it whenever you want, wherever you want, however you want. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's really a pretty special way to spend time with family. Yeah. Speak to first time boat owners. The yep. moment that they walk into Marine Max, what does that consultation look like? And how do you make sure that every customer who comes in here is satisfied by the time that they leave? So it's a lot about asking questions, right? We need to find out from families what, what are their interests, uh, what, how many people are going to be boating? Where do you think you'll be boating? Are you going to be in the bay? Are you going to be in the gulf? Are you going to be on a lake, a river? Um, and, and we can help select the right, the right boat, right size, right package, right options for the family so that it works great. Yes. Here in Florida, there's no secret. There are boat shops on every corner. Absolutely. What makes Marine Max so special and what makes it so important? Why customers should partner with Marine Max? So, there's a lot of reasons, and I'll, I'll try and keep it, keep it tight because we're, we're really proud of our organization. Um, this store is uh, part of a large company. We have over 60 locations nationwide, all over, uh, from north to south, east to west. And, uh, but what that means is we have more resources for our customers. Uh, so if you buy a big boat and you go to New York in the summertime, there's a place to get service, and they know who you are. They know your name when you show up there. Um, but more importantly, the culture of our company is, is that of education. So uh, you mentioned the first time boater. So you and your family come in and buy a brand new boat from us. Not only do we help you select it, but after you decide, okay, I, I'm, I, I'm committing and I want a new boat, uh, we have a full-time captain that his job entirely is to teach people how to use their boats, how to have fun, how to be safe, how to navigate, all of those things because we love to have happy customers. So Colin, I have to ask, when I walked in, I was just wild by, you know, I'm a man of style and flavor and swag. I know? like it. And I'm seeing it, you know, 360 degrees all the way around me. But what would you say is your go-to, or should I say the most expensive boat that you have on the showroom floor? 
Uh, on the showroom floor today, we have a uh, an Ocean Alexander 45 foot divergence. Woo! It's a it's, it's a beautiful. It's the piece. Super Bowl ring of uh, boating. Absolutely, huh? I love it. I love it. Oh, watch a little TV. <laughs> Welcome to my humble abode. <laughs> oh, man, luxury. You know, when you're relaxing, you have a bed, you got a TV, and if things kind of get a little foggy and you got to take care of a little business, you even got a bathroom. Now, you don't have to go, but you got to get out of here. <sighs> Nobody going there for 35, 45 minutes. Party doesn't stop. You got a party in the back. You got a party downstairs. It's a lot of luxury on the Alexander, baby. A lot of luxury. See the form? Did you see the form? Snow! Someone's out there! See that? Saved. Time out. Have you ever seen a boat with a windshield wiper? Oh, just, just call me captain, baby. Just call me the captain. How do I look? Wow. See that? That's big turn right there. That's a million dollar turn right there. Boom. Oh, yeah. That's a million dollar. Thank you so much for teaching us about boating. Can't you wait to it. get on the water. I mean, what else can you do here in Florida? during the time of COVID. A lot of families are spending yeah. times on boats, so good Absolutely. luck to you and your team, and thank you for having us today. Thank you so much. Up next, we talk to an expert about how to protect your skin when spending time outdoors. The reason I came to Trinity Dental Arts is because my mouth was in horrible shape. It is a long drive here from Kissimmee, but was most impressed with what I saw. Dr. G's credentials, the training that she'd had, Every person in this office made me feel very comfortable. And then by the time they walk out, you have a different person. And to see that over and over again is so fulfilling. If there's one thing that Floridians get a lot of, it's the sun. And there are so many outdoor activities to do in our state that protecting your skin is vital. And that's why I'm joined today by Dr. Margaret Rinker, a board certified dermatologist with Soho Dermatology Associates. Thank you so much for joining us today. Doc, you've been serving patients for the past 20 years and most people think that, uh, you know, you need to wear sunscreen going to the beach or going to the theme park. But isn't it also true that even if you're going outside for a small period of time that you still need some level of protection? Absolutely. Um, we don't realize even uh, five to 10 minutes in the sun can cause damage. Sun can actually penetrate through clouds. It can penetrate through window glass. So when we're driving in our cars, even we're actually getting sun damage without even realizing it. So sun protection should become part of our daily routine, no, no matter what we have planned for the day. Now, there are a lot of people who may want to get a tan. What is that uh, minimum number of SPF protection? They want to get a little tan, but still protect their skin. That's a, a very good question. And there is no tan that's considered safe. So uh -huh. No tan considered um, no safe. No tan is considered safe. So what I suggest for people that want to look tan is use a self tanner. Ah, yes. that's it. so that's one of the misconceptions yes, that are correct. out there. Yeah. I didn't know that. Now the effects of, uh, of the sun uh, can certainly have an impact on, you know, how we age as well. You know, what, um, you know, what are some of those things that people can do to prevent that aging? Absolutely. So we know without a doubt that the sun, the UV exposure does accelerate the aging process. It leads to wrinkles, brown spots, white spots, um, and even thinning of the skin to the point where it may bruise and tear easier. So uh, these are all important reasons why we need to really take care of our skin now. And there are a lot of options out there for taking care of our skin. Um, obviously hats, sunglasses, protective clothing. And then we rely on sunscreen for the areas of our bodies that we can't cover through clothing. Um, we need to remember with sunscreen, we have to apply a very uh, generous layer and we have to reapply every two hours or else we're not getting the full benefit. 
Wow. Now, skin cancer is something that people spend a lot of time in, uh, in the sun, and they're concerned with that. Uh, what are some of those signs that, uh, that, that people should look for uh, that may want to uh, uh, come, come to see you for an uh, analysis? Absolutely. So skin cancer is extremely common, and uh, it is actually the most common cancer in the United States. And it's estimated that one in five Americans uh, will get skin cancer at some point in their lifetime. So it's, it's very prevalent. And um, so the things that I tell people to look out for, um, a sore that doesn't heal, it might be a pink, shiny, or crusty spot that's slowly, slowly getting bigger. It may start to bleed for no reason. Um, that's typically a sign of what we call basal cell or squamous cell. Now, those are easily treatable as long as you catch them early. If, um, if they're not caught early, they, they can be a bigger problem. They can even be disfiguring uh, to have to remove them. The other type of skin cancer we see is melanoma, and that's the bad one. That's the one that we really worry about, and typically a melanoma would look like a very dark, irregular mole, one that you haven't always had, one that's different from all your other moles. It might be changing or growing. So the key thing I want people to know about melanoma is that it doesn't have to be raised. It can be flat. Yes. It doesn't have to be in an area that's been exposed to the sun. It can happen anywhere on your body. And it doesn't matter what color your skin is. It can happen in skin of any color. Doc, we talked briefly about uh, certain treatments that you can get uh, come to, coming to your office. Uh, but what are some other types of services that uh, your staff provides uh, if one wanted to do some cosmetic adjustments? Sure, absolutely. So we, uh, we do Botox and we do fillers. Um, we also have a wide variety of lasers. Uh, lasers can be used for hair removal. Uh, we use them to treat brown spots, red spots, and uh, they're also used to help tighten the skin. Um, and uh, we also have a, a device called MiraDry. MiraDry actually uh, uses thermal energy to destroy the sweat glands under our arms. So it can actually significantly and permanently reduce underarm sweating, um, which is huge here in Florida. Yeah. Um, another device we have is called Cool Sculpting. And Cool Sculpting um, uses cold to target fat cells. And the cold will damage those fat cells without damaging any of the other surrounding skin cells. So when you have a cool sculpting treatment, the, it's applied to certain areas and typically it's that, that area that doesn't respond to diet and exercise. It could be the abdomen, the flanks, the thighs, even under the chin, but um, it's a very quick, easy procedure, no downtime whatsoever. And after that cold application, your body will reabsorb those fat cells over the next six weeks and we see significant reduction. Well, Doc, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, I have a few more questions that I want to ask yeah, that are just absolutely. burning on in my <laughs> spirit, but we'll get to those uh, in our overtime. So thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Don't go away because Arrow tells us how to keep fleas and ticks away from finding our furry friends. I earn -a your trust. I earn -a your business. Ierna's Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Ierna's and Bryant are doing whatever it takes to keep you and your wallet comfortable. CAC 1813676. We've talked a lot on this show about how to keep pests away from you and me, but what about your pets? Bob Wilgus is back on the road to tell us about protecting your pets from fleas and ticks. Hey, Michael, good to see you again. Once more, we are here at one of our Aero customers' homes. And today, stand by, we're going to be talking about the vampires that live among us. No, not the Bram Stoker, Dracula. We're actually talking about two of the most common pests that we deal with every day at Aero Environmental Services. And anybody who has pets, know and worry about. And that is fleas and ticks. Once again, joining me on the program in our segment today is John Esquivel. John, thanks for being with me today. Tell our listeners why it's so important to be concerned about fleas and ticks. Uh, around the home and in the home. I'll start off with the ticks first. Very important. Ticks do not fly, do not crawl. They attach. They're a parasite, a blood-sucking parasite that could be harmful to your pets. Now what I mean by they do not fly or crawl, they could be in blades of grass. You could have an animal that has a tick or another dog that's being walked along your yard, your property, have a tick lay down on your, your lawn and the tick attaches itself to the blades of grass. Then you come out to walk your dog thinking he's going to be safe and there you go, he gets infected with the tick. 
that can cause parasites. So it's very important to have us come out and do a treatment. That way we can protect them from that. Now, let's stay on ticks for a minute. The way we treat ticks is different because, you, as you said, they attach themselves to underneath leaves and in shrubs. So a DIY treatment isn't really going to do it. And also, uh, the, the treatments that we put on our pets, that's just topical. That's really not getting rid of the ticks. Tell our, our, our viewers a little bit about why our treatment is so important to be effective to make sure that the ticks are gone. First of all, we educate you. You must have your dog taken to the vet to get treated for the fleas or the ticks. It's very important. Then we go identify where your dog has been in the property and treat the whole lawn, not just where they've been. We come out and do an insecticide on the whole lawn because we don't know if he's crawled over there. DIYers will say he was laying over there and his bed's over here, so I'm just going to treat that bed. Okay, you take him to the vet to get fixed, but then he's going to go out to the other part of the yard where you didn't think he was. Right. Then you have the same problem. Okay, time to pivot to probably the most athletic insect that we know, and that is the flea. Those little guys can jump really, really far. So treating fleas, especially in the lawn, that's kind of a great preventive barrier because dogs and cats will bring the fleas inside the house, and you can have that cross infestation in and out and in and out. So tell our, our viewers about how we protect homes, families, and pets from that nasty flea. Fleas can live up to two months on your animal. A female flea will lay at least 20 eggs a day. Half the eggs will be female, which eventually produce 20,000 new fleas in 60 days. Fleas can jump 100 times their length. A flea jumping several inches is like an average sized human jumping over a 30 story building. They get into couches, carpets, baseboards. That's why it's very important to have us come out, do a thorough inspection after you've taken your dog to the vet. So, you know, we were, we're out here on one of our customers' lawns, and just before our segment today, we saw people walking their dogs. And it happens every day, usually in the morning or in the evening. So I think what's important to reinforce with our viewers is that if you've got a flea and tick barrier on your lawn, if somebody walks by with a dog that has fleas on it and they jump off, what happens to those fleas when they hit a treated lawn? When they hit an arrow treated lawn, you're going to be you're gonna ha reassure that your, fle your pets are going to be protected. Anything can come across your lawn, so it's very important to have your lawn treated with insecticide to get rid of those fleas and those ticks, protect you and your pets that you love. So Michael, I know you're a pet lover. I've got two dogs myself, and I sleep well at night knowing that my home, my family, and my pets are protected from these vampires around us. And, and I know that our listeners and our viewers are going to want to know more about how to protect their homes. But uh, for now, I'll throw it back to you in the studio. Thanks, Bob. And if you have any pest questions for Arrow, drop them a line at arrowservices.com forward slash Michael. For those striving to succeed during these dark times, I give you this. Good isn't good enough. Never be content because greatness is obtainable. And something that I learned from football, in order to be the best, you have to be able to deal with the worst circumstances. Stay encouraged and continue to press on. And join us next week when we talk about a charity event close to my heart, the walk to end Alzheimer's, and much more. See you next time.